More on the market movements, let's talk to Joseph Busher from JM Busher Investments. Um, Joseph, thank you so much for jo joining us. Prusas and Nasbash took a dip in their share value today, and this after CEO Bob van Dijk resigned. Can you tell us a bit more about this? Well, they, they have been running the business, I think, over the last uh, few years, uh, decades more, uh, and they've done very well. I, I think this was quite a shock, I guess, to many people because it's quite sudden in the media. So the resignation is according to the statement by mutual agreement and it's immediate, although he is going to hang around for the next, I think, 12 months until 2024 to do the handovers and so on. Um, it is uh, a surprise. Uh, you know, we uh, did not expect that, but certainly he also came through when, uh, you know, the CEO was supposed to take over uh, uh, and passed away. Uh, but this is a shock to the market and I think you saw also the reaction in terms of the share price. Mm. And then meanwhile, RFG Holdings, whose brands include Rhodes, Squish and Today, says they have lower sales volumes in a trading statement. And they say they continue to grapple with the challenging environment constrained consumers face. And this is something we see from many retailers and many um, companies. For certain. I think if you look in terms of the cost, first, they've got their own input costs. Then we do have the electricity shortages or challenges in the country they have to make up for that but i think if you look in terms of the top line revenue up by 10 percent uh despite the fact that volume was uh, uh, down uh, by about 7.7 percent but i think they were able to manage the cost in terms of the input costs um and uh, the rent also did help in terms of um uh, you know, their their business from an international perspective. So I think overall, despite the fact that, uh, you know, volume was down uh, uh, on the domestic market by 7.7, mm -hmm. international by about 13%, um, uh, they were able to still, uh, you know, make sure that the top line is positive, which is quite good given the tough trading conditions. Mm -hmm. So the JSE itself was in the red today over many indicators. What What happened today that made it all so red? I think it's just the uncertainty that is really just global. Um, you know, Brent crude oil is going up, 95 creeping up, uh, and certainly in on the domestic market, as you mentioned in your intro, we had petrol increases, one of the biggest uh, last week, um, and the rent remains very volatile, above 18 um, uh, to the dollar, 19 to the dollar now. So certainly that is really negating any positives we're going to be able uh, uh, to see. Uh, and that is really just giving the market uh, jitters in the sense that, uh, you know, there's a massive uncertainty and uh, the volatility is going to remain with us. Uh, you know, companies certainly they're going to be um, affected for longer periods than we expected in terms of um, uh, outside pressures from some of their key factors that drive their profitability up. Joseph, are investors, especially on the local market, a bit jittery regarding the interest rate announcement this week? Or is there a general consensus on what to expect? Is it a pause? Is it another hike? It is a pause. I, I think the um, Reserve Bank is going to be very careful, despite the fact that some of the global central banks have been increasing rates. Lately, uh, ECB, you see uh, Lagarde saying that this might not be the last, or Soria the same. So I think we, he is going to, uh, you know, Reserve Bank is going to be very cautious this time. Uh, given that, you know, inflation actually, as you put it as well, moved from 4.7 to 4.9, which is really surprising. But it couldn't be because of, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, fuel and other costs that have been going going up. And so I think they might uh, uh, pause, but certainly we know nobody is expecting a decrease at this particular time, given that we still have lots of external factors uh, that are going to influence the direction of the interest rates in the next um, uh, three to, to six months in mm -hmm. SA. As you mentioned earlier, Brent crude oil is up to nearly $95. And we've also seen the RAN is about 19 RAN hovering thereabouts. Um, firstly, will the upward trend cease any time for the price of Brent crude? And with the weakening RAN, that doesn't spell good news for our fuel prices. It doesn't. Um, so, so I think if you look in terms of the uh, Brent crude uh, creeping uh, to about 95, there is uh, cuts that was agreed by OPEC. Uh, certainly, if you've got more demand, you've got reduced supply, what you're going to do is going to continue seeing, uh, you know, the price going up purely because of the production cut by the oil producing countries, mm -hmm. uh, yet the demand remains very mm -hmm. high. So that might remain a little bit longer because remember, uh, some of the countries certainly will benefit from a fuel mm -hmm. going up despite the fact 
might be sanctions in Russia, but certainly they are finding ways to be able to uh, offload some of their fuel. And then Saudi Arabia, UAE, some of the major oil producers, you know, they also certainly looking at volumes uh, to mm. be able to increase the lot of activities that is happening in those countries. So I don't see that happening, but I think, you know, if we can just get the runs to be stable and possibly just creep towards uh, down to 17 and so on, we might get mm. a, uh, you know, a little bit of a relief, but I don't see that happening quite soon. Thank you so much to Joseph Busha. That's all from me for now.